Well, welcome everybody to another session in our Women Lead Online Forums brought to you by Connected Women of Influence. I'm Patty Vargas and I'm your host today. And the thing about Ask Me Anything is that there are always all of these fabulously talented, brilliant women that are just smart enough and brave enough to say, okay, I'll sit in the hot seat and you can ask me anything. So today we have a subject matter expert with us who's going to talk all about branding, photography. You're going to hear a whole bunch more about that as we go. And our session today lasts for about an hour. If you've joined with video, you'll be able to see our guest and our attendees alike. Questions and comments are always welcome. And if you have something you'd like to ask anonymously or contribute anonymous, anonymously, you can just put it in the chat and I'd be happy to share it for you. And I think Marcy's going to show us some brilliant examples of her work too today. So I think this is going to be really, really super interesting. And our topic today is how to use your brand to attract your next level clients. And I'm really excited to tell you a little bit more about Marcy Bro. So Marcy is a personal branding photographer. And what that means is that she makes sure that the image you're putting out there captures your unique story and attracts your next level clients. And with an extensive background in marketing and sales, she now gets to invoke her creative side, resulting in photography that is spot on for your signature visual brand. So without any further blah, blah, blah from me, I'm going to turn it over to you, Marcy, and tell us more about you and what you do. Sure. Thanks so much for the intro. And I always love connecting with this group because as evidence, there's always a great collection of women who join. Uh, so yeah, so I am a branding photographer and I come from, before I took my photography full time, I had a career in marketing and advertising sales and did a lot of branding. Um, and the company I worked at for 10 years uh, was a case study in branding because I worked for TV Guide and the company TV Guide was back in the day, that little tiny magazine that you got every week, letting you know what was on television television because how else would you know? And then as the television world went digital and we got cable, the magazine went away and the company still existed. But what they did was they licensed all of their data. They had 80 years of data on television and movies, and then they acquired all kinds of other companies around the globe. So it shifted. And so that was a, an incredible incredibly powerful lesson in branding because when you say the name TV Guide, people thought of one thing, what, but we were turning into something else and it was more of a business to business company. So it, it was uh, a, a 10 years, a decade, literally I worked there 10 exact years. I left on the day that I, um, I started 10 years later. So that was one of my jobs. And so I love now that I'm a photographer and I get to work on other people's brands that are, I think, a little more exciting than TV Guide. It's really fun because I had uh, quite a pedigree in really learning how to transition like a grandma, grandpa brand into something a little more uh, contemporary. So, well, you know, it's like they say, you know, a picture is worth a thousand words, you know, yeah. so especially when a brand is reinventing themselves or, uh, or, or, moving from one type of business to another, what better way to get that message across than just in visuals? You know, it's going to be way more effective than reading a bunch of words or a, a broadcast or something. Yeah, exactly. Yes. And it was, I had this conversation yesterday with a woman I'm doing photos for and I had met her on, and I know her, I know her in person because we network together and I had a Zoom meeting with her and my first question was going to be, why do you want new headshots? And then I saw her and she let her hair go gray and was beautiful and, and it was a natural curl. So she had completely gone more natural and embraced her natural side. And in addition to that, she has to do, she's a CPA and she has to take her business online now. So she, that was her first ever Zoom meeting was with me yesterday. So she has this new hair and now she has this new way of doing business. And so it was really, really cool seeing her evolve her brand is evolving yeah, yeah. love that yeah that's a great yeah. example and you know just um 
kind of in that same vein, I remember um, we were selling our house in Rancho Bernardo. This was years and years and years ago. Is there a and, real estate agent attached to the story? Yes, there is. And somebody had recommended this woman and they said, you know, she's brilliant. She's so good. She'll work so hard for you. And she did. She was a great realtor. But the first time we met her, we were like, what? <laughs> what? Because the picture on her card was those glamour shots you know and and when we met her she was there was nothing wrong with the way she looked it was just not that you know it was she was clinging she was clinging to an old image yeah 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 wow yep I know I know and I, I laugh because as soon as you said the real estate market I think <laughs> um you know a lot of people in that business they are either like super hip and contemporary or they're clinging to the past and there's not a lot of in between. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. So can you give us an example of maybe somebody you worked with other than the woman that you just mentioned that was kind of like that, where it wasn't so much that their business was shifting so much, but that they had changed and they wanted a different story. Yes, I have a lot, of, a lot of those examples, which is really fun because I feel like when I work with someone, they, I, I just collect a lot of uh, really amazing stories because a lot of times when people are going through a transformation, that's when um, they initiate a conversation with me. Mm -hmm. So I do have a lot of those stories. And specifically, I can think of one woman who um, she had lost a lot of weight and she had been doing her hair differently. And she just it was oozing this vibrancy that I think she was lacking before and she was an interior decorator. So it was really fun to dress her in all of these like bright colors. She worked, I actually connected her with a clothing stylist, so I didn't dress her, but um, she worked with a stylist that picked out all of these outfits she already had in her closet. Uh, and, and then she just felt really comfortable because she'd been doing Pilates for the last year and a half. And she, uh, she was, she lost a lot of weight. And I think that one client is very representative of a lot of people that I work with that are ready to just uh, unveil and transform. And a lot of it is women. And a lot of these women also are maybe going through a life change. Maybe they've left mm -hmm. a long-term relationship or they've left a job and they're starting their own business. And I, there's something about women that are going through transformation that just, I love that because you get them in front of the camera and I say it's like a magazine style photo shoot. You know, I'll offer hair and makeup and then you get to wear all these different outfits you might not ever wear. So that's really fun because you really feel like you're getting your uh, celebrity experience for the day. And I mean, who doesn't want that? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. That's great. So just a reminder to all you guys, any questions you've got, just feel free, speak up, ask a question, share an experience you had, like maybe sometime that somebody captured you in a really fabulous way and, and made a change. Um, but in the meantime, you know, Marcy, what, tell us like, maybe what are some of the mistakes people make when they are trying to get their brand across or they're trying to get their message across? Sure. So I think branding is really important because there's, there's a lot of people that work in industries where perhaps you are working in an industry that's competitive, like a financial and advising industry or real estate business. Um, you know, so you, you don't want to look like just a generic person. You really want to come out and um, just talk about your life and your, in your brand. And I have, um, I have a little formula I could talk about with, what I think is what makes a constitutes your brand. But I think mistakes people make is they, um, you know, they might not talk about themselves enough. Like we, you know, they're, they're hiding behind their business hat or face and really your brand is comprising of everything that makes you, you. So I think people need to feel comfortable being vulnerable and talking about their personal life or their, their hobbies or their interests and mixing that in with the, the business work. And I, what I, when I mean is on social media or when you're posting something to maybe um, an email newsletter, it's really pe people want that mix. And um, I, I see it, I see it all the time, even personally, when I 
I send out an email newsletter and I talk about something personal that always gets the most um, reaction and traction. And, you know, if I'm just pitching something or selling something and that's all I'm doing, that's going to get old real quick because we all know that person. We can picture that person right now in our head. If you go on their Facebook page or if you're talking with them, all they're doing is pitching, 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 and talking about something that's on sale or something they're, you know, blah, that's just boring and that's not going to make you memorable. And I think that's a huge mistake. And if yeah. you do want to pitch something, you have to give value or entertain or do, do something in addition. You have to really pad all of that noise with something more fun. So people will tune into your channel, if you will. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you got a big hand clap from Patty on that. Patty, one. I know. <laughs> Patty knows. Yeah. You know, that, that is so true because, um, I think we're, you know, we're all taught like how, how to sell and how to, um, you know, how to get our message out there and how to differentiate ourselves it, it, almost to a, a negative side of it, you know, of just everything being about selling. And, and then when you do share something that's personal about you, it makes, it puts dimension to you. It makes you, you know, it, it brings you alive. So Mm -hmm. Diane, do you, have, do you have something you'd like to share? Well, actually, Kay had her hand up first. So do you want to call on Kay and then me? Okay, go ahead, Kay. <laughs> well, I just wanted to mention, because I just finished a photo shoot with Marcy, and maybe about five years ago, I would have never thought about having a photo shoot or taking pictures, you know, because it took me a long time to actually mm -hmm. talk about myself. I always felt like I was bragging and, you know, or or something, you know, or if I, if people would encourage me to tell my story and I would always say, well, why? My story is no different than anybody else's, you know, but over the last few years, I've become aware that, you know, it's more of a personal connection when people connect with you and people do know who you are and do know your story. And so at that time, I started thinking about the things that I needed to do. And one of them was like every couple of years, I just wanted to just update my photos, you know, because I use them in marketing and I, I just think it's a really good idea, but I don't, I wouldn't have thought about that maybe five or six years ago. Mm -hmm. So, and Marcy helps with that a lot because, you know, she's very in tune to, um, I've never actually had anybody ask me the questions that she's asked me about my business and asking those questions got her to know who I was, what I do, um, how I do it. And, Honestly, it was just such a, a great experience. So she really pulls that out of you because I don't think I would have thought about a lot of the things that, that she, she did. And well, so, what, and what were some of the like, things she asked you? What were some of the questions? Well, she was, she asked me like, is there anything that you do on Safari that might be different or something that people would not necessarily think about? And that's when we, we um, when I showed her a picture of how we do bush tea out in the, out in the bush. So we, we have coffee and tea and people never think about that, you know, until they're on safari. And I showed her a picture and she said, do you think we can recreate that? And of course we did, you know? So just things like that, um, that she wanted to delve into. Um, and she would ask me, would you wear this on safari or would you wear this on safari? So we're today we're going to do a safari shoot and we're going to, you know, do some outfits for safari. And so every time, you know, she'd look at an art at a, at a, um, a, a clothing, she would say, is this something that you would wear on safari? And I'd say, yeah, if I was in camp, I would wear it. And then she asked me about camp and tell me about that. So really she, she had a really good knowledge when she, when we first met, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. about mm -hmm. what I do. And, and now I, I could, now great. I could sell, now I could sell a safari on your behalf, Kay. So yeah. let me know. <laughs> I'm, I'm dying to go now that I've spent so much time with Kay and that's what I love. I get to get to know people's businesses and I think you take for granted things that you just know and do all the time. And it's right. when you talk to someone, they undercover, uncover those little nuggets where you, you're like, oh, I never considered that to be unique or valuable. And those are the kinds of things that are like branding magic. Yes. Yes. So thank you. Thank you, Kay. That was so kind. <laughs> Um, so well, it's so funny because I was, as when I got on this, um, zoom, I was thinking about Kay's photos that she shared out and they were spectacular. And so I didn't know Marcy that you had done them, but they, they capture her 
in such a great way. I can't wait to can't wait to see the next iteration of the safari looking ones. Hey, you are getting awesome branding photos. That's faux fo show right there. Faux show. Faux show. So faux show, right? Yeah. <laughs> So I have a couple of questions, Marcy, if you don't mind. And I was, I'm sorry, I was looking down at my phone because I was trying to find something to show you, which I couldn't find. Um, I have this caricature of me. Um, it's, I use it in many instances. It's I've on the back it. of my book. You've seen it, right, Jay? Yes. It is so, do I have a book here? I'm like, I can walk away and get one, but it's super cute. It was a, um, a digital caricature wasn't like a Disneyland one. It's really cute. And it looks like me. And so my first question to you is how do you, what do you think about using some, okay, wait, let me rewind. So <laughs> I need to explain what I do before you can know if it's a good idea. So I am a speaker, um, motivational speaker. I, I do content development and writing and graphic design. I'm an author. I've written my first book. I'm working on my second one. I'm now part of, um, the, I'm a partner with um, Women Lead Publishing as part of CWI. So there's a lot of stuff, you know, I'm juggling all the time and I'm a philanthropist and a volunteer and a three-time cancer survivor. So I have, I know, right? So I have this great caricature and I use it pretty often. I mean, it's, it's super cute and fun. So, what, so my first question is, what do you think about that kind of branding? I, I love that because you already have such a great look. You've got this awesome, like really structured, cute hair. And if those glasses are, are something you wear all the time, that's awesome. And you have some cute bright top on. So you definitely have the personality to back it up. So I would say yes, because when you can back it up, then yes. So, okay. so I would say go for it. And, and that's very memorable. And not a lot of people have caricatures of them for their branding, so yeah. Okay, thank you. And then it's funny because my husband and I, when we got married, our invitation was a caricature. <laughs> I, mean, I just love them that they're done right, you know? Yeah. But the second question I would ask is, I also recognize that I need some new headshots or, you know, some new photographs for my branding for the different kinds of things I do. Photographs, not headshots. <laughs> yes, photographs, excuse me. Hmm. Photographs. Um, and so I... I had an idea, I have an idea and a question. The one idea was, um, I don't have a lot of really good shots of me on stage type of thing with the microphone or whatever. And I need those, you know, I have, I have some action shots, but they're not, and they're good. I mean, they're fine, but they're not. Yep. Sell me. Yes. So, so is your question ahead. is how do I create that? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> this is a common question because a lot of people like you want to um, promote themselves as a speaker. And so there's, so there's a couple ways this can be accomplished. And uh, what's really, really tricky right now is that nobody's gathering in um, large auditoriums of any kind. So right. it's, so there's a few, so one is um, I worked with this video company and once a year they would do this whole big yeah. program where they would get you on stage and they would, they would do your speaker reel. Um, so it's not unlike a Sue talk where you could, so first of all, um, I would recommend if you haven't done a Sue talk yet, um, that's a great opportunity to be a Sue talker because then you will get those photos as part of that package. Perfect. So, and I'm doing, I'm doing the Inland Empire one October 20th. So. <laughs> So you guys all need to be on it. Oh. Perfect. Okay. So that's, you're going to get amazing photos from that. So okay. that's, that's a huge hurdle that most people don't even have the option to do. So having that resource, you're already going to be um, a rock star. But for somebody that might be listening um, in, a, in a broadcast later or on this call that has the same question, what I've done in that scenario is um, I faked it. So with one, one client, um, same thing, he wanted to put himself out as a speaker, but he didn't have any photos. So what I did was I got, um, I got a microphone and then I just did a lot of close up shots of him talking into a microphone. Um, and then I, I blurred out the background. And so I kind of made it look like he was presenting in an atrium um, to an audience. And so that's just one, one way to fake it. Um, another way is you can get one of those like headsets, those like, you know, those um, Madonna things. Yeah, I, like not, not like something like 
um, Jennifer Lopez would wear on stage, where she's mm -hmm. like dancing and singing at the same time, but a lot of speakers wear them. And the same thing, you can be like, you know, and in this scenario, it's not making eye contact with the camera because the, the camera is not your audience. You're speaking to an audience that's like out of line of sight. So you would just be animated and talking. We would just fake it. Um, and with that being said, it's interesting because I am putting together a day. I'm, rent, I'm gonna rent a, um, a stage and do something like this for clients who, I'm gonna bulk the clients together into one day and offer this. But you're already ahead of the game because you're doing a Sue talk, so you won't need to fake it for very long. <laughs> Well, I was, I also um, have done community theater and so, and of course they're not using their theater at this point. Yeah. So um, I was thinking about asking them if we could set up kind of a fake that photo would be shoot great. inside and there. The lights and the, yeah, I mean that would And then be like screen behind with like a, a PowerPoint or something like that, or just my opening, you know, with, I don't know. But, you wear your caricature behind you. I mean, hey. <laughs> yeah, right. I usually yeah. use that on there. Yeah. The, um, so this is, thank you so much. This is all great. And then the last question I have, and I don't know if other people have the same question. I'm not trying to hog you up, but no. maybe I am actually. Um, but the, another question is like, look, if you look at, look at Nicole, look at her awesome photo down there, yep. you know, yeah. looking up and that smile and the color. Yes. So I wanted to ask about like, kind of like, po like, I know like, po like poses that like give you that thought leadership that, yeah. you know, yeah. wisdom thing. Sure. Yeah, I do love Nicole's photo. And I know the photographer that did that. She does beautiful, uh, beautiful work. And um, what, so what so as far as posing the thought leadership, I think anything that shows your vibrancy, because you are vibrant, and you're full, you're just full of life. So posing can there's a number of different posing. So but I think there's, I mean, I could go into a whole, um, and I can even demonstrate, but I can go into a whole th discussion on posing. But what I would say is the pose would have to make sense for what you're trying to convey. So I would reverse engineer and ask yourself, mm -hmm. okay, so if I'm working with a client, well, how do I want to make them feel? Am I the kind of um, speaker or coach that like pumps people up? Or am I the kind of coach that likes keeps them on task? Um, am I the kind of speaker that, um, you know, will have people crying at the end? So really just ask yourself those questions. And then you're, you're okay, you're going to come up with maybe like three or four um, inspirations. So if you're the kind of person that's like, I want to get people fired up. And if you're going to hire me to speak on your stage, you're, you're going to know that I'm going to entertain your audience for an hour and I'm going to take good care of your audience. Then you're going to do all the poses that like show you in motion or just show like energy or, um, um, you know, I'm being a little cheesy right now and vampy, but you are going to bring that energy and you're going to light it up and you're going to pose like you are just on fire. Uh, so that just, it just really is driven by how do you want to make people feel and then embody that emotion. Mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I, in fact, I love that. Yeah. And so. I can, um, you know, I'd be, I'd be happy to, you know, talk with you about some more ideas too because there's there's you know not everything is cookie cutter everyone's a little different and what might like it might work for you might look really cheesy for someone else <laughs> that's true right because i was having this idea of maybe like uh some photos that were kind of like looking up like almost like you're kind of thinking like yep. if you were to use them you'd be like like this or whatever and then you can yeah. have like a, a a bubble like what you're saying or thinking you know, I, like for I your, love, mm -hmm. I always love that photo. And I like that Kay made the distinction between headshots and pictures. And the, 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 the difference is a headshot really is um, a tight crop. Like um, we keep referring to Nicole's because she has that beautiful photo up while she has her video stopped. And uh -huh. that's a perfect headshot because it's a close up. She's looking at you in the eye. Um, and I have some examples I can, I can share, but essentially um, what I love to do is take the camera out wider. And like, if this was um, my set and I wanted to do a photo, I could even be like, look, and just kind of point to something off the side and then and then when from a graphic design perspective I have all this white space right here to add a call to action or a yes. kind of phrase a motivational phrase or something so white room is our friend when it comes to um, branding photos and mm -hmm. I don't, it doesn't literally need to be white but in a negative space white room graphic design sense lots of breathing room is our friend yeah I love that 
Yeah. Okay, yeah. I, I guess I've hugged you up enough, Marcy. So someone else. Oh, I love questions. So this is good. It's probably <laughs> helping other people think of questions too. So don't don't be shy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Marcy, can you show us some examples? Show us some. Sure. I know you brought some some cool stuff. Patty, will you give me ho um, host privileges? I will. Okay. Yeah, because I want to show you with some examples of what I think are really good, um, like sh pictures with extra extra room. So let me find. Okay. So I'm going to share. So this is my. Um, this was my recipe for what a brand Ooh. should be. And I'll get to the poses, but your brand is composed of these three components. It's your vision, voice, and visuals. And so vision, uh, I will, I will, if you want to drop your email into the chat, for whoever's listening, put, put your name in your email and I'll email you this. So you don't have to take notes. Um, and then, um, we can stay in touch if you want. So the vision is just real, just simply, um, there's a lot of questions. I'm going to skim through this quickly. So don't feel like you need to write this down. What is your vision and where do you want to go in your life and your business? Because your brand should reflect your vision. Your brand shouldn't necessarily portray where you are or where you have been. It should be portraying where you want to go. So vision yeah. is really important. Uh, your voice, what you stand for, what you believe in, what you do outside of your business, and then your visuals. So let me just show you um, some examples. And I like to call this the recipe. And if you cook the way I cook, that means the recipe is I got what I got and I don't got what I don't got. So, you know, <laughs> it's, not, it's not meant to be the, the British baking off contest here. It's supposed to be, here's a recipe. What do you have to make, make it work? So a headshot um, is looking right at the camera and smiling, not doing anything super goofy, just solid headshot. Nothing, um, nothing super campy or goofy. Another thing in your recipe that you should have is um, lifestyle shots. Yeah. So these are photos of what you would do when you're not working. So this could be with a partner or this could be uh, at the farmer's market with your dog. If you have a dog, please add those to your photos because dogs are just gold. <laughs> so if you got a dog, if you don't have a dog, borrow a dog. Everybody, everybody loves dogs. <laughs> um, and then I like to show people in your work environment. So with Kay, uh, we did lots of photos of her working at her desk. Um, in addition to uh, photos of her, of what it would look like if she was on safari. Um, and then shots of your product or service. And you might be thinking, oh, I don't have a product, but if you don't have a product, you have a service and guess what? You are the product. So that's, um, so this is an example of someone making her chocolates, you know, just really let the, here's what I like to say. The brand, their photos should let people know what it's like to work with you. So that way they can get excited and it won't be any surprises. And it's almost doing pre-selling your photos of pre-selling what it's like to work with you. Um, so this is a, a fashion stylist and an interior designer. Um, again, and this is an example of a desk that I built for someone in my office because she didn't have a cute office of her own. So I had her bring in items that were, uh, were cute and I just made this little desk for her. So again, just showing what it's like to work with you. Uh, the tools you use, even if it's your laptop and your phone, we all use those. It's um, great to show the tools that you, you use while you're working. Um, and then I like styled shots and stock photos. You can do cute little shots. And then I love phones. Like there's a there's an iPhone here. That's actually my iPhone. I just stuck next to um, a notebook and I put a, I just Photoshopped that screenshot in for my client. So those are always great if you can um, get a computer screen or a phone and just uh, either Photoshop or use Canva and do it on your own. Um, and personal photos, again, the dog, dogs, everybody loves the dogs. So use them if you got them. Like just totally, and kids, people love kids too, but I think people like dogs more. I'm just going to go <laughs> <on>. <laughs> And you probably shouldn't borrow kids. 
<laughs> no, definitely don't borrow kids if they're not yours. That would be borderline creepy. Um, <laughs> and then, okay, so here's a good example of uh, a horizontal photo. And this is a connect, uh, Connected Women of Influence member. Her name is Sarah Clark Williams. She's a coach. And so I did this photo of her exactly what I was talking about, like looking to the side and then her graphic designer made this for her, but it's all about the white space. And then she's just a prop to prop up the information. Um, and again, this is one I created in my studio. Just, you know, the, that long banner is awesome and th that's important to get. And another example of a horizontal photo because you're a graphic designer or in Canva. And I keep mentioning Canva because it's a do-it-yourself graphic site because mm -hmm. I don't think that, you know, hey, it, if you have a budget to hire a graphic designer, please do. And if you, until then, you can use Canva. Um, and then what I love to say is, uh, you know, when you step in front of a lens, it really shows people that you are owning it and it inspires people to want to get to know you and it makes you trustworthy, but most of all, it makes you worthy. And, you know, it's kind of, um, it's kind of might come off as cheesy, but I don't think so. I think it's really important to, um, share your worth. Um, I'm going to stop my screen share by... See, hold on, hold on, I'm, I'm going forward. Stop, share. See, I'm trying to get my cursor to work. There we go, okay. <laughs> Bye guys, gotta go. Bye, Bye Kay, Kay. thanks Bye. for joining. Bye okay. Kay. That was awesome, Marcy. And that, that was a great way of showing what you were talking about with the white space and, and mm -hmm. like what Diane referenced about looking up and maybe there's a thought bubble that's there or something. So anyone have questions? I mean, I'm sure that your creative juices just started flowing as we were looking at some of those. Well, again, sorry. <laughs> I would say a couple things. First of all, uh, Marcy, I hope you'll, I mean, I put my email in because I'd love to um, see that presentation, but also, and I love, okay, what I love is that you're suggesting to people that they spend that time really thinking about the intention of the photos and of the brand, which is so important, you know, because with all of that thought process and all of that, you know, um, winnowing down, you know, so you have almost like images in your head, like you used to do in advertising, right? You'd sketch them out and you're like, we need to make this photo. Yes. Um, so I think that's so useful, but, um, I really hope that you will reach out to the people that drop their emails and let us know what it would take to work with you. Um, some of us don't necessarily have a big old budget or a bank account or anything like that. Like some of us are on disability, <laughs> but, um, but you are amazing. I mean, and having the, the blessing of seeing some of the initial photos of Kay, you you can capture that you can capture spirit that's what you do mm -hmm. yeah and yeah i will absolutely let you i'll email you and everybody that raised their hand and let you know and i'll give you some examples of what it would be like to work with me and i will say that i get it because i am an entrepreneur i work for myself so some people want to you know go all out and have a big budget photo shoot and some people really need just a few updated headshots for LinkedIn. So it's, you know, there's something for everybody to just, I just want you to have photos that you love. Um, and whether or not you work with me or you work with someone else, or you just figure out how to do it on your own. I really think that you need to have photos that you love because someday we are not going to be around and our loved ones are gonna look for memories of us and we need to make sure we're leaving them something that they can remember us by. So, um, and they're not gonna go hack into your iPhone and print out your selfies. <laughs> so. I hope not. <laughs> you know, me too. <laughs> delete, delete, delete. <laughs> I know, I know. So and then Susie, what, what are your thoughts? I saw you put in the, in the chat that you're ready to go. Like, what are you thinking of doing? Hi, Marcy. Mar I've been, I've been um, telling Marcy for like over a year that I'm ready. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm really ready this time. Um, I just, I need some updated headshots. Definitely. I look at the, my professional one that I have and it's just not, I'm not even the same person anymore. Mm. You know, like five, six years ago, I'm just, I'm yeah. a different vibe, different everything. So I'm ready. Mm. Cause you're feeling worth it. You're feeling Absolutely. worth it. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. 
Well, I'll, I'll follow up with you, Susie, and we'll talk about some ideas, because I know you've mentioned it to me a few times, but I, um, I'm i not very um, assertive in a <laughs> when it comes to, when it comes to, when it comes to, you know, bugging people. So I will, I will follow up with you and get some. That'd be great. I'm ready. I am. And, you know, likewise, I, it's just timing too. So it's, I'm ready. It's, it's, and I think even back when I was thinking about it and you were, you know, you and I were talking about it, it wasn't the right time yet, but I'm, it, it is now. Well, I'm excited just to catch up with you in, I know you're making a lot of shifts to your business. So um, I think it'd be fun just to really kind of yeah. get inside your head and find out what your, what your new, new version of you is. Absolutely. <laughs> um, and what I'll do, I'll also, when I email you lovely ladies, I'll send you a, a copy of the brand planning guide that I have people use because some people aren't really sure of what their brand is. And, you know, you don't want to get stuck in a sea of generic. And so, for example, I've done this work on myself. And I know that my brand is all about um, connecting and being in person. And I'm, a, I'm also a huge environmentalist. And if you follow me on social, or if you're on my newsletter, I talk a lot about uh, how I support the environment. And I love the outdoors. And I'm irreverent. I'm not super formal. And so I've just done enough of this work. So I had my own branding photo shoot a couple weeks ago with um, a photographer that I do photo shoot. We trade photo shoots. And it was really fun because I'm like, okay, I need photos of, I just knew what I was missing in my arsenal because we get sick of our photos pretty quick. <laughs> uh, and then I convinced my husband to be a part of the photo shoot, which was new for me. He hadn't, I hadn't asked him to do that before. So it was really fun because I got to frolic on the beach with my husband and it was really fun. Yeah, I saw you were, you were coming out of the surf. Yeah, I board and stuff. Yeah, that was. Yeah, great. I had her do photos of me. Um, it was supposed to be post surf, but I had like full makeup on, so I'm like, yeah, I just just got done surfing, and I like wet my hair. So I'm like, yeah, no big deal. I look great. <laughs> it's a lie. <laughs> um, so, Marcy, tell us um, if someone was to work with you, um, what's what happens first, I guess? Like, what is your process like? Yeah, so the first thing I do is I'll set up a conversation either over the phone or over Zoom, and I just ask lots and lots of questions. So um, it's just me really drilling down into, um, so for instance, if I was having an, an initial phone call, I would just start with the question of, okay, so tell me what it is that you uh, want to put out there. How do you want to be seen? Who are your um, ideal clients that you want to work with over and over again. Who is this person? I really need to get clear on that because some people aren't clear on, on that. And if they are clear, it's great. It just makes the question shorter. But if they're not clear, that's like the first thing I have to uncover is who, who are we talking to? Who are we speaking to in these photos? Because that's also a piece of advice I give clients is I want you to look right in my camera lens. Um, as, and if, um, so if I was photographing you, I'll, I'll, you just see the camera in front of your face and you're like, ha, ha, okay, am I doing it right? <laughs> and then, so I just say, okay, look right here, right in this lens. I tell them where to look and I say, think of that person, your client or someone that you really like and look in that lens like you're looking at that person. So you need to have in your head an inspiration. So that person that you want to work with and then... I'll ask questions like, okay, do you know what you're going to wear? Or do we need to talk about wardrobe? Do you want your hair and makeup professionally done? Let's talk about that. And then, it, you know, that'll really inform the conversation. And then we'll need to figure out where to do the photos. So I have a photo studio in Oceanside, but the, the photo shoots happen all over. Sometimes I'll rent a I'll rent a space. Um, it just it all depends on what the goal 
is. So it's just questions, questions, questions. And then what I do is I send them an email recapping everything we talked about with a plan of action and kind of a schedule for the day and a countdown. Okay, a week before you need to have all your clothes picked out, ironed, cleaned. Uh, a couple of days before you got to have your mani pedi done um you know so we just so they so leading up to the photo shoot that this person knows exactly what they need to do because um inevitably the day of the photo shoot you're running around like oh my god i don't can't find the shoes i wanted or the belt i wanted or i don't have the bra with this top so <laughs> it's just me um finding out how to give them the photos that they need. And sometimes I do a Pinterest board and I'm like, all right, here's your inspiration. We're going to do mm. these shots like we see on this Pinterest board. Um, and I, I just move into produce producer mode. So once you work with me, I'm your producer. If we need to uh, get people in the shop to be your clients, if we need to get an audience there to hear you speak, we'll figure out how to do it and that's all what I do and that's mm -hmm. um it's just all driven from the questions I ask great that's awesome what what other questions do you guys have for Marcy or insights um or thoughts go ahead Contessa yeah you have to unmute <laughs> Hi. I didn't say anything um I have like two but I'll ask the first one um when I had my second daughter, I had got Bell's palsy. I'm not sure, sure if anyone's familiar with that, where half my face was paralyzed in addition to like a new baby. And so I'm really like insecure about taking photos. And whenever I do filming for um, like as a science journalist and I do things myself, but I'm always like on my good side, what do you feel about people doing that? Is that wrong to not show the imperfection? No, I don't think it's wrong um, because, you know, you can't, that's a tricky one because you really can't control part of your face. So, um, and it's not, it doesn't make you wrong or broken, obviously. It, it's, you know, the gift you got <laughs> for being a mom. Yeah. Yay, lucky you. <laughs> um, and, you know, women have stretch marks from being a mom. They get varicose veins. So um, having children does um, horrific things to our bodies. So, you know, let's just embrace that. But, you know, also there's a lot to be said for let's work with it. And if you just want to sh do a three quarter turn to show the side that you feel most comfortable on, that is not wrong at all. And if you are feel like if women feel like they're carrying too much weight, um, that's a one I hear a lot is, um, let me just give you a posing tip because Good girl, <laughs> pretty much most women um you know so it's not about trying to hide your body parts but what the goal is to make you look as best as you can and make you look like you're having the best day ever so just little things like right now i'm wearing a shirt that um sh like this armpit flab is always um everyone has that so it's just you know holding your arms in a way that doesn't accentuate that and i'll give you let me show you a posing tip let me move this far away so i'm gonna stand up and pose but you're not gonna see my whole body but what i um what I always say is that whatever is closest to the camera appears bigger. So anything that you feel is bigger than you want it to be, you just want to move it away from the camera and I'll demonstrate in a second. So if you think about my two hands right here, um, you know, they're the same size, but if I hold one closer to the camera, it exaggerates and it looks much bigger. So that's the same mm -hmm. concept if you're putting your tush close to the camera or, uh, you know, if you have, you're really big in the bust. So let me demonstrate how to, um, how to pose. So what, what you're going to do is, um, so again, you're not going to see my face, so I apologize, but I have, um, I have belts and the dress I have on, I love because it makes me look like I have an hourglass. But what you're going to do is if you feel like you are carrying a lot of weight in your hips, um, what you're going to do is just shift them to the back. And the way, you can do this is you just turn a little bit to the 45. So now um, it's already more flattering because it's not so boxy. So you're going to turn a little bit to the 45. And all I'm going to do is shift the weight from this hip to this hip. So here the weight is on my front hip and it's bigger. So I'm not even moving my feet. I'm just shifting 
the weight to my back. And look what a difference that makes. So just, uh, um, just I'm not even moving my feet. I'm just moving my hips. And it's almost like I'm dancing. So just kind of get in the flow and then pop it to the back. And so that's one tip to just, if, you, if you're feeling like you have a lot of weight, and a lot of women carry a lot of weight right here, um, just kind of like in that scenario, what you would do, um, I'm not blessed with that problem, but a lot of women are. So if you feel like this is just loud and proud and you don't want it to be, just stick your face a little closer to the camera and it's subtle, but just kind of um, dip in a little bit. And this is de-emphasizing this and emphasizing your face. So I'm glad that you asked that question, Contessa, because we're not about changing the way we look, but we're about just accentuating what we like about ourselves. And um, I appreciate you sharing that. Thank you for, for bringing that up. <laughs> That's one, one more small one. What do you do for people who like, when I'm with all the lights and stuff and filming, I just, just my face goes away. Like powder doesn't work. Like what do you do in your photo shoots for that? <laughs> You mean you feel washed out? Why well, I, I get sweaty or oily? I don't know. But oh, powder, your makeup like the days, yeah. the powder doesn't do anything. Like on I know. Days. Well, okay. I will say I do work with professional makeup artists, and um, something that they do will make the makeup last longer. So. Um, okay, we're not all gonna walk around with a uh, professional makeup artist on speed dial every morning, but I know from watching them that they use like a setting spray. Um, so there's, there's some spray they use on the end. I watch when they do makeup and there's a setting spray. And um, I know Kay jumped up off this call, but wait, I did photos last week for Kay at her home in Riverside County. And I'm kidding you not, it was 105 degrees. And we were doing photos in and out of her house. And we only spent a few minutes outside because it was so flipping hot. Um, it, it, so I could see her neck and her chest just dripping sweat, but her face just needed a little bit of blotting and her makeup looked perfect the whole time. And I, w I don't know what magic elves are, are out there being makeup artists, but they, they look so good. So I think just maybe um, YouTube, and I wish I knew the answers, I'm not a makeup artist, but you put that into YouTube because everybody and their sister has uh, makeup <laughs> techniques on YouTube. So definitely um, find out what products they use and find out what products you, uh, are for your skin type because everyone's skin and hair is different. Um, but I know there's magic tricks. I just don't know the answers. I just hired them. <laughs> professional makeup and hair is a really good idea then for. Yeah. And it's not a requirement. I don't, um, I don't require, it's like, of course I'll work with you if you don't get it done. But if you're having an all day photo shoot, it's, it's like, if you're a bride, it, getting someone to do your makeup on your wedding day is a good idea because it just lasts all day. Um, and especially if you're sweating um, or crying, if you're a bride, you might cry. Hopefully you're not going to cry during a photo shoot, but hey, it happens. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think hiring a professional hair and makeup artist, and I know you live in the LA area, so there's, there's a really cool app that is, um, it's called Glam Squad, Ooh. and you can, um, but it doesn't, it, it's not available in San Diego, and I curse that, but in LA, Glam Squad and, and other, other major cities too, and you can hire a makeup artist or a hairstylist or a facialist to come to you in the touch of a button, and it's awesome. Wow. So if you have a special occasion or a video, I would recommend um, getting, getting a hairstylist or a makeup artist to help. Thank you. Yeah. Good questions, Contessa. Yeah. And That's Contessa, can I just add in you don't look like you have Bell's palsy at all. I had it years ago too. Oh, you God, look, yeah. but you look all balanced and good. And I'm always like Lincoln. on this side, on that side, <laughs> a little bit. So you like, can't really I, tell. Yeah, I think as a woman, that, right? it's yeah, always right. mental. You know, as a woman, it just kind of sucks yes. sometimes. You're just always mentally, but I've accepted <laughs> now. And now I'm thinking it's like a stretch mark. It's like for my my daughter. It's you know like dark big black circles under your eyes they never go away hmm. <laughs> it's, it, we need to uh, i saw this um michelle obama thing on instagram i barely do all that but it said like we're taught to just pop back after pregnancy like why isn't aging appropriate anymore like embrace everything that comes with age and i've been super on that now like oh yeah it's just gray hairs whatever <laughs> yes <laughs> yeah 
That's why I love Meghan Markle because she, you know, she married the prince and usually it's customary for them to like pop out right after they had labor and be like, look, I'm doing great. <laughs> and pose. But she was like, no, I'm not going to take a photo the day my baby was born and publicize it. Like, I appreciate that because that's real. And how are we as women supposed to hold ourselves up to that standard? <laughs> that's too much. But we have people like you who can help us get there. Yes. And, and people like Michelle Obama, who's my, my hero. I love her. <laughs> well, Marcy, you, yeah, Liz, you've got your, your, right, your finger you. up. Sorry, thanks. Thanks a lot. I have a question. Some people or women go through a whole process of identifying the color scheme. Mm -hmm. And some don't. And even some that do do it, sometimes they, you know, the colors that one wears can either take away from you or add to you. And it has a lot, I think, with your personality. Yes. Do you get involved with assisting your clients with that or recommend yeah, someone I to? Do. Yeah. So Good. That's a great question. And I know, um, I, I, so I'll, I do it on a very cursory level. Um, but to answer your question, I know that, um, Sheila Netty, who is also a member of this group, she is a, um, consultant for a financial, um, financial mindset and success. Mm -hmm. She had that done with someone. Um, so you are welcome to reach out to her or I can connect you because I had a photo shoot with Sheila and she wore these colors and I was like, wow, those are amazing. And she had told me during our initial intake call that she had worked with this person that helped her come up with her colors. Mm -hmm. And it was awesome because it really showed. So I don't know that person, but I can connect you with that person. But what I do is it's actually kind of rare that somebody would do that ahead of time, like Sheila. Um, but I, w that's all part of the discovery conversation I have. So if I was talking with you, I would say, okay, Liz, tell me about the colors that you get the most compliments in. Um, and you know, I've, I've seen you on here and I know that you can wear bright colors. Um, yes. but if I hadn't met you before or seen yes. you, it would, um, just be, um, a, a conversation about, okay, what colors, give you uh what are your power colors and you kind of already know and yeah, then i do <laughs> and then, <laughs> yeah, yeah you know and then i always say bring more options than you think you're going yeah. to wear because okay. if something looks off i'll just be honest i'll be like okay we shouldn't wear that today and i'll just be right. honest and i'll just say let's move yeah. on um and you know i'm not gonna have you wear something that is unflattering and i will i will be your kind big sister <laughs> and tell you but <laughs> um you know because i have stuff in my wardrobe that i wear that i look back on i'm like ooh, that was not flattering <laughs> um but i liked it at the time you know but i think and, and when it comes to um photos a lot of times bright colors are great but some people can get away with like creams and blush tones and like a champagne color so it just kind of depends on your coloring and everyone's a little different what do you think of black and white black and white is is good i think it um yeah generally black and white is good but and it, i'd have to like see the garment so yeah. if you and i were going to work together i would just put a zoom call together that's what i did last week and i just this woman just sat in her bedroom and pulled out a bunch of outfits and i was like yes yes no yes yes and yes um because black and white if it was like big blocky color blocking it might be distracting but if it's like a cute pinstripe or a pattern Black and white is, is great. Just, it just depends. Everything depends. <laughs> yeah. Thanks a lot. Yeah. Any other questions for our subject matter expert? Tracy, I see you look like you're gearing up. <laughs> <laughs> I've um, really loved um, getting to know you, Marcy, but this was so impressive and I learned a lot. So I really admire you even more than I did, which is amazing. Thank you. And, um, in the past, like I've seen people looking for, you know, photographer for the type of work that you do. And I've recommended you like on Facebook, but you know, I think a great opportunity for us as CWI members is supporting each other. So I'd love to, to know more about how I can promote you or, you know, just um, get your name out to even more people. Oh, thank you, Tracy. I, I so appreciate that. And I think um, 
I did I see yeah you put your name into the chat so I will email you and put a link to my contact info and I would yeah I would love um, any kind of connection I really appreciate that thank you for your kind heart <laughs> Well, Marcy, this has been really awesome. I've, I've really enjoyed this time with you. And, you know, we put this idea together months ago, you know, and so I've just been really um, looking forward to this and getting to know a little bit more about what you do. And I think beyond just photography of, of us as a person, you know, or a headshot or a body shot or whatever. Oh, that's not a good word, body shot. You know what oh, I mean, hey. right? <laughs> that's branding. But, <laughs> but the, the idea of how it goes in with branding, you know, and some of those visuals that you shared just kind of brings the whole thing uh, around, you know, so I really appreciate you being with us, um, you. sitting here in the hot seat, taking everybody's questions and any last questions or, or thoughts that you guys want to share before we wrap up today? I just want to say thank you. And I cannot wait to get to know you because likewise, this is, this has been so awesome. And it was a last minute thing. I was like, you know what? I'm going to push this aside and jump on this. My goodness. I'm so glad I did. Yeah. Aren't you glad? Yeah. So Marcy, how can people reach you? What's, uh, what's your phone number, your email address? Sure. The best way for people to reach me is my website and that's Marcy, M-A-R-C-Y, bro, B-R-O-W-E dot com. Um, and if you're watching this live, my website is down. Gotta love that. But it's, it's coming back online. So that's the best way. And I also have um, an Instagram that is Marcy-Bro. And fun fact, I'm the only Marcy Bro in the world. So <laughs> if you Google my name, um, you won't, it won't be hard to find me. <laughs> <laughs> Well, thank you so much. And thanks to all of you for, for taking your time to join us today. Again, thanks, Marcy, for sharing your considerable talents with us. Thanks. And stay tuned, everybody, for our next Ask Me Anythings as they come around. They're always interesting, just little tidbits of interesting facts and talent from our, our great sisterhood here. So take care, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thanks again, Marcy. Appreciate Thank you. you. Thank you, everybody. Bye.